Aboard the Star Huntress, Dr. Rulina faced medical supply shortages as a mysterious illness swept through the ship. Passengers in agony, she turned to the AI for answers. Could it be the water? As she prepared to address a panicked crew in the main hall, her communicator buzzed. Dr. Lena, get to the bridge. There's someone you need to see. Okay, show of hands. Are we curious who Dr. Lena sees? Yeah, me too. <laughs> that is the result of immersive storytelling, storytelling a uh, ancient learning technique, but more on that in a moment. Did you notice something else? The role of AI. Is it a friend or foe? A collaborator or a tool? More than plot points, this illustrates the future of human AI collaboration. How do we prepare for a future where creative decision making with AI is vital? So when was your AI flashbulb moment? It could have been in 2020 when the World Economic Forum predicted 85 million jobs would be disrupted by AI. Or in 2023, when IBM said 40% of workers would be displaced by AI without additional training. Well, try this out. Turn to the person on your left and the person on your right. One of you is obsolete because of AI. <laughs> Good luck figuring that out. But notice, I didn't have you looking at me. That's 1.4 billion people, China's entire population. We saw an unemployment of 25% at the peak of the Great Depression. Could this be bigger? But here's the twist. It's not just about job loss. It's about job transformation. The same report predicts 97 million new jobs will be created. And many of them have a need for creativity. Many businesses see that now as a core skill. Think about it. With AI, the marketer now writes the copy, designs the ad, and posts online herself. Many jobs are expanding. Our job security is in our ability to apply creative thinking. My AI flashbulb moment, it was November 2022. I was in my big data class confidently talking about the future of AI possibilities when that future crashed into my present. ChatGPT rudely launched. <laughs> Everyone had an AI oracle. In five days, a million users. In 60 days, 100 million. It took Netflix and Facebook years to do that. Student essays done with AI clicks, they triple dog dared me, make the assignment longer. <laughs> As educators, we were blindsided. And cheating, we cried. The AI bans followed. By April of 2023, UNESCO found 90% of schools had no AI guidance. It wasn't just them. CEOs rang the bell. Maybe we were teaching them skills that would be obsolete by the time they graduated. So is this a time for a high prohibition? Or is that our call to action? Ancient educators, they had no such dilemma. Uh, picture yourself in a dimly lit cave on an island, painting intricate details about hunting, gathering, life, and death. This was just discovered in Sulawesi, Indonesia, and it's dated for over 50,000 years ago. It's the worldliest known time of a abstract human expression. It is effectively creativity vital for survival. And that is affirmed by Jenny von Petzinger's TED Talk. Uh, she shows us that these paintings, they were not random sketches. They were knowledge being passed down through a, a visual means. You see, we were gesturing, we were vocalizing, and we were making images. That's immersive learning. More than a technique, storytelling is who we are. We pass down knowledge through thousands of years and across thousands of miles using these immersive techniques. But we lost our way, and I'm guilty. Stage on the stage lectures, passing facts to the audience, 
That is the way education was delivered in many places as it went to the masses. We forgot how important these immersive storytelling techniques were to invite the learners along with us. Our cave dwelling ancestors knew better. So this got me wondering, is there a better way that I could tap into immersive learning and use these techniques in a new way to ignite creativity? Picture a boy, Irish Catholic, on stage as Tevia in Fiddler on the Roof. That boy was me. <laughs> in school plays, community theater, each role was a life lesson, learning about people, understanding empathy. And this helped me even when I started to work. Working retail at 16, I was able to have better customer service. I won Employee of the Month three times. <laughs> this profound insight, though, that storytelling and immersive learning uh, stayed with me. And this meant that I could have some kind of active, collaborative, personalized learning that would allow me to have these skills. And I could see it in lots of places in my life. It's often better than the way that we were using traditional learning in uh, most schools. Consider trauma-affected teens. They often struggle in a traditional learning environment. Ask them to write a resume. That's difficult. But instead, ask them to pitch to the queen why you are qualified to lead this quest. Now, purpose is clear, and creativity flows. This is live action role play. And these LARP experiences for education work wonders including in my own nephew's lives on the autism spectrum. They are thriving today in college and work, all the four better going through these experiences. So I thought maybe we can do more. I'm inspired. I wanted to apply these techniques in my own delivery for classes. I wanted to find a way to have active, collaborative, personalized learning in more of what we do. And so, welcome aboard the Star Huntress. I am Admiral Liftoff, and you are the ship captain, and you're battling a viral outbreak. And you are the chief marketing officer, battling bad press. In my workshops, executives become crew members. They, like an interactive escape room, have to collaborate to solve problems. They pour over detailed reports and, and ship schematics. And through this, they build very creative solutions something that they couldn't do probably without those techniques. And here is where it gets even better. Now with generative AI, they are working with those AIs as teammates, as collaborators, as coaches, as critics. And now their solutions become even more creative. I've seen this work uh, even with uh, the uh, so-called students that are non-creatives. They're able with the AI to build product prototypes they're able with the AI to align those products to markets. And they're able to now explore uh, different marketing strategies in ways that they previously could not. So if even non-creatives could do this, no matter where you are on that spectrum, I think you could too. So where does this go from here? As a fifth grader visiting Disneyland's Haunted Mansion, I swore there were ghosts appearing right next to me. Is that real? It's real enough to give me shivers all these years later. And maybe you have similar experiences. But we are now on the cusp of a new AI immersive era where the spread between digital and physical is blurred. Just this last year, the Sphere in Las Vegas, this theater opened up and wowed audiences. Inside the theater, millions of LEDs are able to display larger than life visuals they can beam audio with different languages to specific seats in the theater. Transport to a rainforest, we can smell the scent or feel the humidity in the air as it envelops the entire theater. How about an F1 race? Your seat rumbles giving you that experience just like the driver. These are 4D experiences, again, blurring the lines between physical and digital realities. And it's really just the beginning. It's a glimpse of where we're going. Already today, students can work side by side, professors at the depths of the ocean or on the surface of Mars, as if they are there through AR and VR experiences. Companies like BP or Hilton, 
use these tools to firefight on a virtual oil rig or deliver customer service in a virtual hotel, all from the comfort of your living room. And as I speak, spatial computing is being imbued into wearables as common as eyeglasses. So even you can have an AR and VR experience really wherever you are. That means that we have new ways to tap into immersive experiences for work and learning for the world. Yes, the Web3 metaverse, it lives on. And so I think you have the power to spark this creativity yourself. We can design immersive learning that is active, collaborative, and personalized in ways that we're just not doing today. This means that we can ditch the lectures. Learning is not something that is confined to a classroom, or bound in a book, or trapped on a screen. It extends into our community and around our world. So you can take action. I encourage you, give it a try. Use a chatbot not as a search engine. Configure it as a teammate, as a collaborator, as a coach. We need you to do this because we must transform the future of education and work. And Dr. Lena just stepped onto the bridge, and she is looking right at you. <laughs>